Okay. This is uh, Photoshop uh, CC 2014, I think. It's on the uh, the uh, current build of the production machines. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the crest uh, alterations that C-Team seems to like. Um, this is a fairly high resolution image that I pulled off of Google. Uh, the ones that the analysts give you will probably be thumbnail size. So you can just uh, go to Google and search for your uh, brigade name. Like, I think this is the 194 Engineer Brigade. And then click on the images link and then under images I believe there's a button called tools and if you click on that you can tell it that you want like it'll kind of drop down a little bit and then on the left hand side there will be a row of options and one of the options is size and you can pick large and see if you can find a large one or you know medium or whatever um, and you can waste like 20 or 30 minutes doing that and still save time on the back end because you won't be having to uh, rebuild the entire crest from scratch, basically. Because uh, you have to size them up to like a reasonable size. I usually try to make them at least 500 pixels wide. Uh, just so when they shrink them back down to put them on the slides, they look fine. Um, or they can use them in a larger way too. Anywho... Um, I'm going to change the workspace to Essentials. For some reason this one defaulted to Photography, but Essentials is fine. And this gives you these options over here. Um, your layers are down here on the bottom right. You'll be using a lot of layers. Up here is where you can mess around with colors. Um, you can either like set a bunch of swatches by using the dropper and just kind of click on those or you can just uh, eye drop as you go I usually just eye drop as I go uh, so I'm just gonna get started I'm assuming you know something about Photoshop like over here on the left is the tools um, you'll learn as as we go too. I'm gonna use a lot of keyboard shortcuts but I will describe what I'm doing as I go uh, because keyboard shortcuts are faster and if you're going to have to do this, you probably want to do it the fastest way you can. Um, so, I like to start by selecting the things that I think are going to be uh, at the top of my layers stack. That way I'm not having to hide things to see what's underneath them as much as you will anyways. So, I'm going to start with the star shapes. Um, so, I'm going to use the magic wand tool over here on the left. It's the third thing down. Uh, the shortcut you're going to want to use is W, so hit W. Then just click on, make sure the layer 0 is selected, or yours might say background. Um, and that's one thing you might have to do, uh, or you might not. Um, but if it says background, you can right-click on the layer and say layer from background. It'll be, like, probably down at the bottom. Uh, and that uh, makes that layer editable. But, you know, you might be fine either way. Um, oh! Another thing you might run into is uh, you might grab an image off the internet and try to mess with it and it won't let you add layers or do anything. That is probably because, I think it's under image, the mode will often be something that you can't work with. So if you just change it to RGB color, you'll be fine. Uh, also, if you want to be friendly to printing, you can change to CMYK color. Um, I won't do that for this one because I don't want to, but just be aware that, uh, uh, RGB color is designed for computer screens and it gives you a color range that you can't print, uh, fully and CMYK color, uh, is designed to make sure you stay in the safe range for printing. Anywho, uh, if you get a crest or something and you try to mess with layers and it won't let you do that, just change it to RGB color. Uh, this is all stuff that you can kind of learn from the Photoshop book that I bought. Um, I left it in the clamshell, uh, and assuming no one has stolen it, it should still be there. But what I'm doing now is I'm shift-selecting the three stars. All that is, I'll deselect. 
All it is is I click one of them, and then I hold down the shift key. See how my little magic wand tool thingy in the middle of the star there has a plus by it now? That is what happens when you hold down the shift key. I'm selecting the other stars. So now I have them, um, but I don't have the right color selected. Uh, they are white, so I could just go Meh, white over here at the color box. Um, but if they weren't white, you can use the eyedropper tool, which I think is a shortcut I. Yep. And that changes to this little guy, or the button for it is right over here. And you just click in there, and your color is now the, the white of those stars. I'm going to make a new layer by holding Control shift n That brings up the new layer option. It's good to name your layers because uh, some crests are really complicated and you could end up with a lot of uh, layers. So I'm going to call this one Stars. And the mode should default to normal and opacity should default to 100%. And that's fine. This little color drop down, all that does is add a, a little tab on the left side that has a color on it. So I'll just make it red so you can see and hit OK. And see, that's that's what the color does. That's another way of organizing. Um, now that I have this layer selected, my little outlines of the stars is now on the stars layer. So when I fill, which you can go edit and then fill, the shortcut is Shift-5. Or you can switch to the paint bucket tool, which is this guy over here on the left about halfway down. I pretty much always just use Shift F5 because it's faster. Shift F5. This will come up. Uh, sometimes this will default to content aware. Uh, but after you change it to foreground color, it should stay at foreground color. Um, I recommend using foreground color instead of content aware because if, the, if you can't find a high quality... Uh, crest to edit on Google, you'll have a lot of weird uh, artifacts in your color. And Content Aware would maybe turn this white into kind of a cream or something because it, it takes into consideration all of the pixels in your selected shape and then it, uh, you know, generates the new color based on all that when what we really just want is white. So just make sure foreground color is selected and hit OK. I'm going to hide the background so you can see there's my stars. I'll turn the background back on. I click on that eyeball. So now I have my new uh, layer with the stars on it, but I still need to do the fancy effects that they like. So you right click on the layer and go to blending options. And then you have this big list. And I recommend playing around in here because there's a lot of neat little tools and shortcuts you can eventually uh, use to make your life easier on some crests. Like this one is pretty straightforward so you don't have to worry too much about it. But like uh, stroke, for example. If you have a lot of black outlines on your crest that you don't want to have to recreate, you can just use the stroke option and it kind of adds a black outline outside of things and you can adjust the size of it. Uh, but these don't, so I won't. Uh, so, only thing that you will always want to do is click the checkbox next to contour. Boop. And that also, you see, sets the checkbox next to the parent category, bevel and emboss. So now you just click bevel and emboss, and it gives you these options. Uh, I like gloss contours, just show you how Photoshop is sim uh, simulating the light. I like. I think it's this gloss contour. Yeah, the one that's kind of like a big wave and then it goes down and then it goes off to the side as it's on its way back up. Um, and you can adjust the depth to make your angles. Let me make it bigger. You can adjust the depth to adjust how strong the angles are on your uh, beveling. So for star shapes, I like a really, really high depth and a fairly low size. Because if you go too big on the size, it uh, kind of loses the fact that it's a star. But if you go down to like there, it maintains it. Also keep in mind, um, they're going to reduce the size of these crests a lot when they put them on the slide. So the more, um, like if, you, if for example they were this big, by the time they crunch it down, this will just be like a mucky starish shape. 
with a lot of black in it but if you keep the size fairly low to where it's just like a hint a hint of 3d simulated there it'll still look more more or less like a star when they crush it down so you just hit okay and now you have this little fx icon over here uh, that indicates that you have well as it says indicates layer effects um, but a neat thing about it is you can right click on it and say copy layer style and now the settings the effects that I just defined for that are copied to the computer's clipboard so I'm gonna make another new layer control shift N I'm gonna call this one castle blocks and I'll make the color orange uh, now I have a layer to put these castle blocks on I'm gonna go back to my magic wand I believe it's shortcut W yep I'm gonna select the background layer so that I can actually get the shapes and I'm just gonna click on these guys I'm shift clicking them so I'm holding down the shift key and just clicking each and every block so I have all of them I'm gonna reselect the castle blocks layer uh, I, st I already have the white uh, I dropped from before so I'm just gonna hit shift F5 on the castle block layer see it's defaulting to foreground color okay I'm gonna hide the background and you see they're all there cool I just deselected by uh, clicking anywhere outside of the picture with my ma magic wand so now I have this I could right click go to you know all that stuff I just did before but instead I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say paste layer style boop there they are uh, they look a little funky because you know I'm using the magic wand instead of tracing manually um, but when they shrink the picture down to put on the slide it won't really matter too much but if it bothers you you can go into blending options and bevel and blah 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 and you can just kinda bring down the depth a bit until you can't uh, see the fact that it's funky anymore it's just you know it's fine and then hit OK uh, but you notice I'm gonna hide the background again you can see through the cracks uh, between the rocks that is because there is a black line in the original image which I don't have on mine uh, I don't want to trace all that um, so instead I'm going to go back to the background layer and we use the magic wand and I'm just gonna click in this red thing and see how it's like perfectly surrounding that castle I'm gonna go to the select menu at the top and inverse my selection so now instead of having the red selected it's everything except the red is selected but that also includes all this nonsense out here so I need to get rid of that so I'm gonna use say the polygonal lasso the shortcut I think is L yeah the shortcut for that would be L I'm gonna hold down the alt key and you see how I have a minus sign next to the little lasso icon now you might not be able to tell um, but there's a minus sign there so minus sign I'm just gonna click a start point and then you can let off the alt key after you've set your start point and I'm just gonna click around the whole top bit and then you can double click to finish the lasso and now I've deselected all that stuff but my castle's still here so I'm gonna go ahead and hold down alt and set a new start point and then just click around again to get rid of the rest of this uh, extra selection that I don't want clicky 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 double click to finish all right now I only have the castle blocks on the background layer selected uh, you're probably wondering why I'm doing all this but it'll make sense in a minute I'm gonna hit control shift N for a new layer and I'm gonna call it castle blocks background and I'll make it yellow now in the castle blocks background I'm gonna fill with basically just kind of an off color off a little grayish black um, just to kind of get the impression of this these lines that they had between their bricks I'm gonna hit shift F5 okay now I have that 
and I will deselect. I'm going to turn my blocks back on, and now when I hide the background, you can't see through anymore, and that's all I want. Because when I make my big red field, you would see the red lines between the bricks if I didn't have that black going on in the background. So that's why I did that. Next layer I will do, I'll just do this out, this white outside thing. So I'm going to do the magic wand, which is UW. I'm going to select the background layer. Grab all that. So now I have all that selected. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to get that white back. I'm going to make a new layer, control shift N. I'll call it white borders. And I will make that green. And now that I have that made, I will hit Shift F5 and fill with this white color. I'll hide the background so you can see it's there. I'm going to deselect my selection. And now I'll right click on the white borders and say Paste Layer Style. And that's fine. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of this is just personal preference. And you can put as much or as little work into this as you want. Uh, the analysts will usually just take whatever you give them. I'm um, pretty much without complaint. So it's just like whatever you're happy with is fine. Uh, one thing that I've noticed about this one is it has a little, i hide all my layers, it has a little kind of a grayish black border. Uh, that's a good thing to keep because on the slides it'll often be on a white background and this kind of will all just kind of blend together. So on the background layer, there's a bunch of ways you can do this, really. Um, the way I prefer is similar to how I made this background for the castle. Um, and this gives me an opportunity to show you the usefulness of stroke. Uh, so I'm going to just select a black color. And on the background layer, I'm going to use the magic wand to select the outside. So now everything except the crest is selected. And then I'll go up to select, and I'll do inverse. And now just the crest is selected. Then I'm going to make a new layer, Control-Shift-N. And I'll call this black border. And I'll make it gray. <laughs> um, and then on that layer, I will Shift-F5 to fill with the black I just pulled out. It actually looks kind of cool. Um, anywho, I'm going to go ahead and put that behind the background so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to deselect so my creepy crawly ants are gone. I'm going to go to blending options and then stroke. And it's already, you can already see it, um, but I'm going to change the color to a gray. It's just for the stroke. And I'm going to make it bigger. Like right about there and hit OK and if I hide all the rest of this and go to the magnifying glass shortcut is Z and zoom way in and you can see how this is this black part is my fill this gray part is the stroke that that blending option created uh, now I've zoomed in uh, to zoom out you can either come up here to this minus sign or you can just hold down alt and it'll zoom out. Alt just does the opposite of whatever you're trying to do. So for example, if I had the minus selected and zooming out, if I hold down Alt, it'll zoom in. So that just saves you a couple of clicks. And as you get better with Photoshop, you'll want to use uh, keyboard shortcuts as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to turn everything except my black border back on so I can still see what I'm doing. Uh, at this point, you've got these two big color fields uh, to think about, and you can either, I'll just grab the magic wand, you can either select these guys individually and also their star fills so that you're not dealing with a lot of weird shapes, um, and fill and then emboss them, and they'll have their own little borders and everything. And that can look cool, uh, but oftentimes when they shrink the slides down, too many uh, bevels, like the st like I told you about the stars becoming just kind of black masses. Too much beveling uh, makes them look really weird. 
So in situations like this, I like to try and basically treat that field as one big shape that it just exists behind the uh, white borders. And you don't have to be very good uh, with this particular lasso job that I'm doing right now with a polygonal lasso. You just have to make sure that the shape is relatively similar and that it overlaps um, like in this case the white border that's sitting that's, well it will be sitting on top of this new fill layer because uh, if it doesn't overlap it and it just comes up to meet it you will see the uh, I'll just show you you'll see the black background like around the edges because it never actually goes all the way up to the edges there's a little bit of anti-aliasing that happens on the borders so I'm going to make a new layer, Control shift n and call this blue field, and I'll make it blue. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to grab that blue, and I'm going to do Shift F5 to fill, and now I have that big kind of blue shape there underneath my white border. I'm going to deselect, and I'll right click, and I'll go to Blending Options. I'll select Contours checkbox, which automatically checks Bevel and Emboss for me as well. Click on Bevel and Emboss. And now I will make the size fairly substantial, but I'll reduce the depth down a little until it just kind of looks good to me. Um, I'm going to change this gloss contour and just look at what all my options are. Let's see. You can also define your own gloss contour if you want. Uh, I just tend to use the defaults, but if you just click on the picture instead of the little arrow, you can you get these little boxes that you can mess with and kind of just make your own if you want, which can be neat. But I'm satisfied with that one. Now I'm going to hit OK. And then it's the bottom colorful fields turn. A lot of these crests, I'm going to select the eyedropper tool. A lot of these crests end up with this weird kind of purplish red and I don't understand why because um, it's, it's a terrible ugly color so I will always select it and then I'll change it more red uh, and I've been doing that for 11 years now and if anyone has noticed they haven't cared and I, I think it just makes it look better so I'm gonna make a new layer control shift N okay Oh, I didn't name it. Uh, double click on it. Red field. And I'm going to use my lasso to do the same thing I did for the blue layer. Just a kind of rough outline of it. Now I'll double click to finish. And yeah, it just snaps closed. And while red layer is selected, I'll hit Shift F5 to fill. Hit OK. And now that's my color there. I'm going to copy this layer style and see how it looks when I paste it onto the red field. Paste layer style. Eh, it looks OK. That's probably fine. And this one's pretty much done at this point. Um, it, yours doesn't have to look like this at all. You can just do whatever you like. Uh, some things you might run into um, when doing this would be like, say, whoops. Say you have this selected, and you've got this weird kind of boxy shape that happens, and you don't like it. You, Because some of these crests will be fairly large, and when you go to... Uh, deal with these fields the shape will end up not quite getting smooth see how it's kind of boxes itself a little bit there you can use the soften tab and just drag it over and kind of reduce the harshness of that boxing that you see um, also some of these crests will have text on them um, if you find a fairly high resolution version of the crest you can just use the magic wand and do the uh, you know, the same way we did all this other stuff. But if you can't find a fairly high resolution one and you don't want to have to trace all that text, 
you can use the horizontal type tool and just select a font that gets close to the one that's uh, already on the crest. This is another one of those situations where, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and no one's ever noticed or cared. But if as long as you have a font that gets close, say their motto, I'll change this to green. Say their motto is like puppies forever. That's very small. <laughs> Um, let me make it bigger so you can see. Whoa, so you can see what's going on here. And I'll drag it to the front so you can see what's going on here. So there's your motto. But say it belonged like at the bottom of the crest or something. Oh, see those little pink lines that are showing up? Those are really cool because if you have to move stuff around, um, they kind of tell you where the center of your image is. And, you know, it just it's kind of content aware in itself where it lets you know. Like that's the exact center of the whole picture because oop, because it makes like a purple cross. And then it's telling me that, you know, I'm kind of right there. And then, you know, it just kind of informs you a bit according to the context of the image, how you're lining up with other things in the image. So, you know, pay attention to those. They're very handy. And they weren't in older versions of Photoshop. Anywho, um, say your motto has to be like arced or something. As long as you have the text tool selected, you will have this new toolbar at the top here. And you can select that, and you, it's the warp text option. You hit style and arc, and you can adjust the arc until it matches the original text. Uh, and then you can just hit OK. And if it doesn't get exactly right, you can go to edit, and then down to I believe free transform will get you there just fine yeah and say you need the text to be a little taller or a little wider or whatever and just do all this nonsense um, while it's still flat uh, because as soon as you like rotate it say it had to be say your t your uh, crest had some kind of ribbon or something and the text just kind of swooped along the ribbon and you're doing like one word at a time as soon as you do this and hit OK uh, when you go t if it's not exactly the way you want it right then uh, when you go back into transform now you have this weird big box to deal with and if you for example didn't make the text tall enough uh, the first time now it's warping it because up is also uh, arced. <laughs> so just make sure your text is the size you want it to be before you start rotating it uh, and you'll be just fine. Uh, there's all kinds of weird things you're gonna run into when you're doing these crests. Another neat shortcut that I like, uh, if you have a crest that's not suited for using the magic wand, say it has a lot of really jaggedy borders and you're just having to trace the whole thing, uh, in situations like this where there's a lot of symmetry, you can just trace half of it, um, and then once you've traced half of it, you can go to, uh, and you've got your layer over here, you can right-click and say Duplicate Layer, and that'll give you two copies of that half trace that you did. And on one of the two layers that you have now, while it's selected, you go to Edit, and then under the Transform, you can flip horizontal and then you just kind of line them up with each other and once they're lined up you can shift select both layers and right click on them and say merge layers and that'll save you from having to trace the entire image you just trace half of each thing and then duplicate the layer flip horizontal and merge the layers and you use half as much of your precious life uh, spent doing crests um, I can't think of any other, like, obvious things. I recommend playing around in Photoshop and kind of learning it because, you know, we're never going to stop using this program because uh, Adobe has a monopoly. So the better you know it and the more time you spend learning it, the less time you'll waste trying to figure it out and being frustrated while you're under, like, a time crunch. So, you know, flip through that book that I'm leaving in the clamshell. 
and there's there's also YouTube tutorials if you happen to by some miracle have internet access while we're on an exercise um, but yeah once this is done you hide the background layer and then you go file save as and you save it as a PNG and then you give the PNGs to the analyst PNG is a nice uh, lossless I think format uh, if you save it as a JPEG, it's that's what we call a lossy format, and that'll reduce the quality of your image. So, just use a PNG or a TIFF or a Targa. Uh, but, you know, PNGs. Everybody knows how to read PNGs. You just use a lossless format when you save it, and you should be fine. There is one more thing that I need to tell you about doing Cress. Uh, in the pictures folder of both production computers, I have left some little uh, templates, like there's a star template and like a spirograph template. Um, if you're working with a crest that's low resolution and you want to uh, not have to trace stars because stars are a bitch, you can just grab that little template, drag it into Photoshop, and use the uh, uh, magic wand on it to get the right shape instead of having to recreate stars and like uh, six or seven pointed stars uh, but those are typically the those are the only two kinds of stars I've run into on crests uh, so I left those pictures in the pictures folder of both production computers and as of October 2017 uh, they're still there um, pretty sure that's all I have to tell you about doing crests have fun doing crests bye bye